the king of phablets. Hi folks, I'm on Android.com where we get on Android every day. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about why the Galaxy Note 4 is the king of phablets. This is my Note 4 review. Let's go ahead and do this, baby. First of all, what is a phablet? A phablet is basically a phone that can also double as a tablet. Roughly, I would say anything between 5.5 to 6 inches considered a phablet. Some of the newer smartphones that I would consider a phablet would be something like the LG G3, uh, the Nexus 6, the Galaxy Note Edge, and of course the Galaxy Note 4. Now I wouldn't consider anything under 5.5 inches as a phablet, uh, for example a HTC One or the Galaxy S5. Any smartphone that you can still put in your pockets but has a large screen, I would consider a phablet. But for something like a Nexus 7, I wouldn't consider a phablet because it just simply doesn't fit in your jeans unless you're like a seven foot giant. So why is the Note 4 considered the king of phablets? The Note 4 is a fourth generation phone. That means they've worked on this phone for four years. Every year there's more features added. The design has gotten really good. People have been complaining about the plastic design for the first Note series with the Note 4, you get a nice metal bezel, feels very solid in your hands, and the design is awesome. There's no other company who makes big phablets better than Samsung, because they've been working on it for the last four years. Look at Apple, they just started with the Apple iPhone 6 Plus, which is just a start. Look at the Nexus 6, Google has just got into the game. So let's talk about all the features that make the Note 4 the best phablet in the world. First, Note 4 has a lot of features that make sense. Let's start with the one-handed mode keyboard. Although this may be a small feature, but it goes a long way so you can type easily with one hand even on a whopping 5.7 inch screen. Take the Nexus 6 for example. Google just got into the phablet game, it's missing stuff like this. Heck, there's even more one-handed features like reducing screen size, one-handed input, and side key panel. The Note 4 also has the most advanced multitasking ever. Let's talk about the multi-window. Note 4 came out with the first multi-window for Android, period. It has gotten better every year. With the Note 2, Samsung introduced multi-window. With the Note 3, Samsung introduced floating windows. With the Note 4, you can make any window into a floating window. This is pretty advanced stuff. No other phablet comes even close. Everyone likes to copy, but nothing beats the original Note. Next, let's talk about sensors. Yeah, the Note 4 has more sensors you can ever imagine. It's got a heart rate monitor, UV sensor, pedometer, even an oxygen saturation meter, whatever the hell that is. As Health app also allows you to easily record and track what you eat, your weight, sleep, and I've actually had people tell me they lost weight with it. It's amazing. It's also got a great cardio app. Whether you're walking, jogging, cycling, or hiking, it can automatically calculate your distance, speed, and even number of calories burned. Okay, last month I probably watched the whole five years of Walking Dead in about a period of month or two. Yes, I'm a couch potato. And you know what? The smart remote on the Note 4 is awesome. I have like three TVs. I can control all those TVs with my smartphone. The higher blaster on the Note 4 will control all your TVs, Blu-ray players, cable boxes, etc, etc. And yeah, it also even has fingerprint sensor. Now I don't recommend using fingerprint sensor as people can cut your finger off and uh, bypass security, but uh, it's there. Like taking notes with the S Pen, this is the most advanced stylus pen for a smartphone, period. When you write on the Note 4, it finds the exact coordinates, precise angles, and pressure levels applied. Want to take notes like a real notebook? There's absolutely no substitute like the Note 4. Other phone manufacturers try to copy some of the features of the Note 4, but they come nowhere close. The Note 4 pretty much has the Wacom stylus built in. Alright, let's talk about the camera. 
Camera on the Note 4 is excellent, especially video recording. Video recording in 4K is awesome. Also the front camera, 1080p is awesome. And microphone is also one of the best if you are a vlogger. This is gonna be a great way to make vlogging videos. All right, the Note 4 also comes with a ton of different camera modes. It comes with on-screen HDR, which means you can actually see what you're capturing before you take that HDR photo. Also, it comes with selective focus, panorama, photosphere, and even rear cam selfie where it automatically detects your face and captures the moment. So you don't have to fiddle with the buttons on your phone. The Note 4's front camera is also awesome. It's got a very wide angle lens. You'll be able to take selfies easily with your friends. Also, it's got a wide angle mode where you can even stitch up three photos to take ultra wide selfies. Low light photography on the Note 4 is also great. It comes with post processing, so it'll take great low light shots. Not only that, if you're into food and maybe you're a food blogger, then you can go ahead and download the food mode, which allows you to capture some excellent food shots. Samsung has also recently changed how the camera software works. You can actually go ahead and download the latest modes, uh, meaning if the Galaxy S6 came out with new camera mode, uh, you'll be able to download it straight onto your Note 4. All right, next, let's talk about the speed of the Note 4. Note 4 series in general, they come out with the best processor at the end of the year. And for 2014, that was Snapdragon 805. And I know a lot of you have been telling me, oh, Max, the LG Flex 2 has a Snapdragon 810. Yeah, but it's not out yet as of this video. So the good thing is this performance on the phone will last you for years. And by overclocking your phone, you'll make it just as fast as on Snapdragon 810. The best thing about Note phones, they get better with age, just like wine. The Note is one of the most popular phones for rooting and custom ROMs. Let me point out some of the things custom ROMs can do. It can unlock your Wi-Fi hotspot, optimize the TouchWiz launcher so it's super fast, and allow you to overclock your phone so it will run just as fast as the Galaxy S6, which is not even out yet. Now there are issues with AT&T and Verizon models, which I'll get to that at the end of this video. Uh, but for right now, the Note series, you can use it forever. You know, Nexus 6 just came out. There's no reason to get this when you can just simply install CM12 on your Note 4. That's like having best of both worlds. You can enjoy the TouchWiz, or you can convert it into a Nexus 6. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the battery life. The Note 4 comes with a 3,220 milliamp hour battery. That's a pretty huge battery. Now with the latest 1440p screen, the Note 4 doesn't get as much battery as the Note 3. But don't be disappointed, you'll get plenty better battery life than smaller phones like the S5 or HTC One. Also, you have a removable back cover, which means you can replace the battery carry multiple batteries if you need it. And the screen on the Note 4, Note 4 has one of the best screens in the world. When the LG G3 came out, uh, there was some sharpening effects uh, people didn't like. And you can notice it when you go to like full size websites. Uh, when the Note 4 came out, there's absolutely nothing like that. It's absolutely beautiful. There's nothing really bad I can say about the Note 4 screen. It probably has one of the best screens in the world for 1440p smartphone display. All right, another feature that I love about the Note 4 is that you can go ahead and insert a micro SD card. I got the 32 gig version of the Note 4. Uh, right when I got my phone, I just simply inserted a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Instantly, I have a 96 gigabyte phone. That's awesome. Now, if you need more space, you can go ahead and insert an OTG cable and connect any of your USB flash drives. And that requires no root, works out of the box. Simply amazing. If you're gonna get the most out of your phone with a 4K video recording, uh, you're definitely gonna want the external micro SD card option and also the OTG. These 4K videos can get huge. With those storage options, that no longer becomes a problem. Lastly, but not least, the Gear VR allows you to transform your Note 4 into full virtual reality handset. It literally turns your phone into an Oculus Rift. And what you can see is amazing. Spend an extra $199 and turn your Note 4 into a virtual reality headset. There's no other smartphone that can do that right now. So, who needs a Galaxy Note 4? For those of you who wanna do everything, 
whether you're taking notes for your class, sketching new digital art for your next logo, maybe even keeping track of what you eat to lose weight, the Note 4 does everything. It doesn't matter whether you're a student, artist, couch potato, photographer, videographer, maybe a vlogger, the Note 4 can help you accomplish your goals. So the question is, what is wrong with the Note 4? I'll be honest with you, the TouchWiz launcher is a bit laggy. It's horrible, but it's okay. Just go ahead and install a third-party launcher like Nova Launcher, which is my favorite launcher, by the way, and problem solved. A lot of older people, like my dad, they don't even know what a launcher is. That's really the problem. And besides that, if you root and install a custom ROM, you can get an optimized TouchWiz launcher that's just as fast as Nova Launcher. All right, what's the price on the Note 4? That's probably the most important question you should ask. All right, for me, when I buy a smartphone, the price is very important because I want to get the most out of all the harder money I spend on my phone. The Note 4 is priced anywhere between $680 to $750 uh, without contract. Comparing that to the Nexus 6, which is about $650, uh, for about $50 or $100 more, you get a ton more features with the Note 4. You don't have to be a genius to figure out which one gives you more for your money. So I'm not even just talking about phablets. Out of all the smartphones, what is the best smartphone you can buy for your money? It's the Note 4, and that's why it's my daily driver. Before I go here, let me give you a quick buying guide uh, for those of you who want to get the best deal on your Note 4. First of all, if you're into rooting in custom ROMs, avoid AT&T and Verizon because they have locked bootloaders. Or you can pick up their developer edition which has unlocked bootloaders. For AT&T, you can go ahead and use the T-Mobile Note 4. I'm an AT&T customer. I use my AT&T SIM card on my T-Mobile Note 4. Uh, works just fine, 4 GLT works flawless. There's absolutely no reason to get the AT&T Note 4 when the T-Mobile Note 4 does better. Of course, you'll have to unlock it, but unlocking is pretty easy. Just go to sellunlocker.net, pay about 30 bucks. You'll be able to unlock it within hours. For Verizon customers, I do highly recommend you get the developer edition so you can go ahead and install cool ROMs like CM12. The T-Mobile model, which I have here, is the absolute best model if you have AT&T, T-Mobile, or any of the SIM carriers because the 4G LTE works like everywhere in the world. It supports more 4G LTE bands than any other Note 4. I took this to South Korea. 4G LTE bands are different there. Uh, it works on my T-Mobile Note 4. And T-Mobile has pretty good plans. Uh, you can go ahead and unlock the tether uh, with the custom ROM and you can go ahead and tether all you want. I have friends who are doing like 20 gigs a month, no problem. Coverage have been getting better for T-Mobile. And no, I have no association with AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, or Verizon. Every year it changes. A couple of years ago it was Sprint. Okay, Sprint is pretty good too, but they've started locking uh, some of their SIM capabilities, which means you have to actually unlock it before you go out of the country. Uh, if you want to use like prepaid SIM in Asia, uh, you have to basically unlock the device, uh, which can be complicated, and I don't like that. And you can't even use it on AT&T or T-Mobile. But Sprint's not bad, you know, they get pretty good deals. Their signal just needs some work. 4G LTE probably is the worst out of all of the four carriers. All right, if you want to get the international versions, there is SMN910F, uh, which is the European model. That's the one I recommend for most of you. Now, that model does not work with 4G LTE bands here in America on AT&T and T-Mobile. Um, so if you buy that to use it in the US, uh, be aware you'll be stuck with HSPA+. But for those of you in other countries, uh, there is a SM910F, uh, which has great custom ROMs. So that's what I recommend. So do avoid Exino space models uh, if you want to install ROMs like CM12. And also be aware of fake Note 4s. I just went on eBay, I found like, like five fake Note 4s being sold as real Note 4s. And the model number is N910F. Make sure you pay the right price. It should be about, you know, anywhere between 680 to 720, 30, 40 bucks. If you're paying any less than that, you're probably bidding on a fake Note 4. And I do have a video on how to spot a fake Note 4, so definitely check that out. And I would like to hear your opinions about the Note 4. If you do have a Note 4, you bought it, uh, do tell me what you like about it. And uh, if you disagree with my thoughts, uh, do tell me which phablet you think is better than the Note 4 and the reasons why in the comments box. And thanks guys for watching this video. That was my review of the Note 4. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, 
And as always, stay on Android.